the season is done. They've worked hard, and now it's awards time. All the awards ballots were due this week. We get to hand out some hardware. Let's just start at the top. Let's begin. Hart Trophy. Who do you have? Leon Dreisaitl, the favorite for this one. Are you guys going with him? David Posternock says if he has a vote, he would give it to Leon Dreisaitl. Sharpie, who do you have? Yeah, Dreisaitl's my guy at number one. It was an impressive season from start to finish. The Edmonton Oilers were going to make the playoffs. They did. Um, he was great. Connor McDavid missed some time with injury. Everybody expected Dreisaitl to slow down. He was able to win some games, continue his point streaks going. It was a phenomenal year offensively for Dreisaitl. I like Nathan McKinnon in Colorado. I thought he had a great year. Colorado was a top team in the West from start to finish, and they had a ton of injuries. So McKinnon was playing with different line mates all season long. You look at the stat category, he's number one, ahead of number two on his own team by quite a margin. And then I had uh, probably Connor McDavid as number three for me. I know he missed some time briefly with some games, but you turn on a TV and 97's on the ice, you notice him right away. His points per game is unbelievable. He backs defenders off. You don't want to play against Connor McDavid. So he had a great season as well. Those are probably my top three, but there's many more that, that were close. You got You got one and three on the same team. Are you picking Edmonton to beat your Blackhawks in the play-in round? Oh, it's going to be a back-and-forth series. I'm expecting, you know, six, five scores like the old 80s <laughs> oil. But it is that my top three have two guys from the same team. But I'm telling you, Jonesy, like, correct me if I'm wrong. You turn on the games, and those two guys had phenomenal seasons. Yeah. They, they did, and, and you're right about Dreisaitl. The six games that he played without McDavid are really what solidified, in my eyes anyway, him winning the Hart Trophy. And I think uh, there's a lot of us that feel the same way on that. He, he had a monster season. Uh, McKinnon, you talked about him. I think he had over 40 points more than the next guy on his team. So that's an incredibly good season for Nathan McKinnon with Rantanen missing a bunch of time and Landeskog missing a bunch of time. Uh, Artemi Panarin would be the other guy that would be in the mix there. And now that the Rangers are a postseason team or at least have an opportunity to be, uh, Panarin's numbers even stand out that much more. He's he was a guy that really embraced the spotlight in New York. And there's been lots of star players that have signed big contracts with the Rangers that have not played up to expectations because of the, uh, the heat that's on you in a big city like New York. But Panarin embraced it much like he did in Chicago. And I thought he had a great year as well. Yeah, the Rangers look like they could be a dangerous team when this all resumes. So that's the heart. Uh, feels like Dreisaitl will get it. It also feels like... Uh, you know, the other guys that you mentioned there, McKinnon and McDavid could be finalists for the Hart Trophy to, like, pencil it in for the next eight or nine years if they're healthy. Does the Norris Trophy feel about as settled as the Hart to you, Jonesy? It does, and it's it's John Carlson and got off to an unbelievably good start, an, an amazing first half. Numbers backed off a little bit. The Caps had a few bounces along the way at the start of the second half, but Carlson's year has just been miles ahead of any other defenseman. Uh, doesn't get enough credit for what he's done defensively as well. I mean, we talk a lot about his offense, but he's asked to do a lot on that Capitals team, and he is uh, asked to play in every – situation and has played it uh, to perfection all season so John Carlson would be my guy and it's tough for me to even come up with other names that I would even consider to try to beat John Carlson the usuals like Yossi and Hedman yes. obviously are very very good players who have had very good years but Carlson to me is miles ahead of everybody else I'm with you not going to argue on Carlson I even have him for Hart Trophy consideration as well he was that dominant first half of the season I know Washington as Jonesy mentioned kind of trailed off a little bit Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators kind of made things interesting second half of the year he was a beast very offensive season for Roman Yossi I like Petrangelo in St. Louis I noticed something was different about him this year he was the best player on the ice when they won the cup in game seven last year he carried that over this year he had times he looked dominant out there I know the numbers Points-wise, don't match up to the other two, but he was shooting the puck hard this year, scored a lot of big goals, and he was just confident player out there. I like Hedman had a good season. And then you start thinking about some guys that we haven't really talked about a lot. Tony D'Angelo had a great season in New York. Not quite Norris Trophy numbers, but how about those young rookies too? Makar and Hughes, they're right there. Yep. Lots of young defensemen, but I'm, I agree with Jonesy. John Carlson, the wins of Norris for me. All right, well, let's go with Makar and Hughes, and let's bring it to the Calder and Rookie of the Year. Sharpie. Who would you pick, or do you throw your Blackhawk in there, Kubalik? I mean, because you have a rookie who scored 30 goals. It's hard to overlook that. And I'll throw the air quotes out there like Jonesy did as well. They did make the postseason. 
<laughs> they did. I'm not sure they would have made the top eight, but they are going to the playoffs. Uh, Dominic Kubelik does get consideration for sure. 30 goals in the National Hockey League, whether you're a rookie or a veteran, is impressive. And he did it his first year in the league. He's a little bit older, so if you're poking holes in his season, maybe you use that argument. Um, but either way, he's number three on the list because for me, it's Kale McCarr and Quinn Hughes, number one, number two. And, and I don't know how you judge this. I, I just know that when I watch the games, Kale McCarr is that much better than any other defenseman on the ice. He's that dominant out there as a rookie. I know he missed some time. Uh, and Hughes put together a great season in Vancouver. I'm not hating on him. I'll take either one of them. But I'm giving the nod to Kale McCarr with the Avalanche. Yeah, I'm with Sharpie on that one as well. And the, the thing that impresses me both about McCarr and Hughes is their age and their position. To play defense at that age and be standouts is really hard to do. For Kubalik to jump in as a 24-year-old and, you know, play on the wing and score a bunch of goals, that's awesome. But to play defense and be relied upon to keep the puck out of your own net and then create offensively as well, you're asking a lot of young kids. And they've handled it uh, marvelously. There, there's no doubt in my mind that McCarr is the guy, though. When I watch him, you know, there's times when I think it's McKinnon carrying the puck up the ice. And that's incredible to me because <clears throat> McKinnon's such a unique player. But McCarr's ability to skate is like, Nothing I've ever seen before from the back end. I, I think he's going to be one of the best defensemen to play this game. I, I, that's how good I think he's going to be, Liam. And I think he had proved it this year. I know the injury kind of got in the way a little bit of what was happening for him. But um, I can't wait to see him back on the ice. He's one of those players that's uh, clearly worth the price of admission. Yeah, he's one of those guys where you wonder about adjustments for defensemen. You wonder about adjustments for young players and what he played his final college game and then like two days later was playing in the playoffs and then scored a goal on his first shot. You're like, oh, I guess he adjusted pretty well. It seems like he's kind of comfortable in this league. So let's go from defensemen. We go to the goalies. This one seems wide open. Wide open. Who do you have for the Vezina? Jonesy, you can start us off. I, I, I'm going to go with Tuka Rask. I, I think he had an incredibly good season for the Bruins. I think there was... <clears throat> the disappointment of losing last year in the Stanley Cup final and the his ability to bounce right back and have another strong year has been really impressive to me. I, I think the, the Bruins have had a great year and I, I don't think their year is as good without the play of Tuka Rass. So uh, he would be the one guy that stands out to me above all others. And then I'm telling you, Liam, there's a mix of guys that, that yeah. I've jumped around on for – you know, uh, days trying to just come up with other guys that I would pick. But that's the really the reason that I settled on Rask because it's tough to make an argument of someone being better than Rask has been this year. Yeah. I'll make that argument as best I can. But, uh, I don't know, maybe two of those other names you were thinking of, Hellebuck in Winnipeg, had a pretty good season. The Jets were making a strong case to make the playoffs there down the stretch. I like Vasilevsky personally in Tampa Bay. Uh, I, I, he would be my goaltender to start a big game right now. He's got all the qualities you need at the goaltender position. He's big, which I really like when I look back and see my goaltender. Uh, and he had a ton of wins. Tampa Bay was primed, I think. They were rolling at the right time. They seemed to elevate their game. They were looking forward to getting back in the playoffs after we all remember what happened last year in Columbus. I'll be interested to see how they get things going once we start up again. But at the goaltender position for the Vesna, I'll give it to uh, Vasilevsky just to disagree with Jonesy. Well, hey, that's fine. First off, that's a good enough reason on its own. Uh, but I think it's interesting that you note that he would be your goalie in a big spot right now because that's kind of been the question for Vasilevsky. And now he'll have that opportunity once again with the Tampa Bay team that's going to be healthy, it's going to be ultra-talented, and certainly flying under the radar in a way that they did not at all last year. Finish up, coach of the year, Jack Adams. Sharpie, you can begin. Who do you have? I look at the two teams that struggle with injuries this year, Columbus and Pittsburgh, so I'm leaning towards Mike Sullivan and John Tortorella. Columbus especially was smoked by injuries all season long, and, and we watched the Blue Jackets play. Take the numbers off the back. Every player looks the same. They're hardworking forwards. They finish on the forecheck. They've got a little bit of skill throughout the lineup, and they had great goaltending. Those would be my two guys right away. I keep thinking of Rick Tockett in Arizona because that Coyotes team – I watch them, and they keep plugging away. They have the details figured out pretty good, just lacking a few goals up front, and they'd be a different squad. So they, those are my top three. But, again, there's a lot of good options out there. Yeah, I, I like all those picks. I like <clears throat> Barubi and St. Louis as well. I thought yeah. he did another really good job with that team without Tarasenko for much of the year. I thought Dave Tippett did a great job with the Edmonton Oilers in his first season behind the bench there. 
I thought Elaine Vino did a fabulous job with the Flyers as well. They're one of the hottest teams prior to uh, the uh, the COVID-19 break here that we've been on. So, uh, But I do like John Tortorella. I think what he did with yeah. Columbus, the departure of so many star players, including Panarin, who's had a great year playing for David Quinn, who's also done a great job with the New York Rangers. Uh, but Tortorella has done it with mirrors and his team plays consistently the same way every night. And that's when you look at the head coach and go, man, this guy, this guy's bringing it and his team is buying what he's bringing. So John Tortorella would get the nod. There's another yeah. guy it, along the same lines as Jonesy. I know the list is getting long, but how about Carolina Hurricanes with Rod Brindamore? Yeah. Every other that is hardworking in your face. Listen to what the coach says and go get it done. So that's a tough one to pick, but all those guys are great candidates. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at where you were during last offseason. And you were talking about teams that maybe could regress. I think some people thought that Carolina possibly could have been one of those teams, but they haven't. I think if you looked at the Columbus Blue Jackets and all they lost, right, they went all in on free agency, and, yeah, they won a series, but then all those guys left. And it was kind of like, well, what team that made the playoffs this year can we count out from next year? And, Boom, that was the team. You circled the Columbus Blue Jackets, but there they are. So Tortorella, Baruby, and yeah, I agree. I think David Quinn uh, probably deserves some recognition because he's gotten his team into this expanded postseason, and he had to deal with the Henrik Lundqvist situation, dealing with three goalies, and having to do a rebuild while contending in New York City. 